It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? It's a neighborly day. Yo, what up, what up? This is your boy, J.D. Jones, and I'm one of your hosts for Neighborhood Talk. And I'm your other host, Mocha on the Block. What's the deal, Mocha? How you feeling over there tonight? Pretty good. How are you doing? I am well. Thank you. So here at Neighborhood Talk, we want to welcome all of our neighbors and supporters all around the world. But allow me to introduce ourselves. We are the newest, latest, and soon to be most influential Web3 platform to ever exist. Not only is this our platform and our space to display our newest and our latest projects, such as Neighborhood Tales, but we're going to share this space with the dopest guests. And man, tonight is no exception. Mocha, can you please let our neighbors know who we have the privilege of hosting tonight? Yes, my pleasure. So this man reserve, deserves all the accolades. Um, he is a crypto, the crypto politician, Dr. Jamar Montgomery. So please, uh, can you introduce yourself and let us know a little bit more about you? Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's such a pleasure to meet y'all and and be here with y'all on on Neighborhood Talk. Uh, my name is Dr. Jamar Montgomery, aka Jamar the Crypto Politician. I'm so so happy to be here uh, with y'all and uh, to talk about blockchain, to talk about politics and and the future of neighborhood neighborhood tales. No, absolutely, man. Now, so Jamar, I gotta say, man, we 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 carry the same first name, man. My my my, my real name and I, my government name is Jamar, and man, I'm excited to have you on the on the stage and and in our space to to learn more about you know you and all that you have going on, man. But can you do me a favor, man, and just let our neighbors know how'd you even get into the crypto world? Oh man, I've been I've been watching I've been watching the crypto world basically since 2012, 2013. Uh, I didn't get involved back then. I just kept my ears to the streets. At that time, it was, you know, they were talking about crypto in terms of it being used on the black market and things like that. Um, and so I just, you know, I, I just kind of stayed away from it, but but kept my ear about it. Then in 2016, um, I came across Ethereum uh, and it was it, it was like my mind was blown. I, I looked, I read the white paper. I actually understood the technology and was like, this is this is going to be groundbreaking. This is going to be life changing. Uh, so in 2017, uh, my partner and I created a, our own token called Amy and uh, the Amy token. Um, okay. We started a company called Cryptonomics Wealth. We folded that up in, in 2018 and I stayed within the crypto space um, and really jumped back heavily back into it uh, during the pandemic. Uh, but like I said, I've been a builder and an educator in the space since since 2017. I've spoken at numerous conferences, uh, the the uh, U.S. Africa Business Opportunities Exchange Conference in 2019, the Promoting Success. So I've just been in the space for a while, and it's been great being able to educate our leaders and our legislators and our regulators and our elected officials about crypto as well as the people. Yeah, no, no doubt, man. You're definitely making waves in that area and that in our in our politics man so thank you for you know diving into that for us yeah like um making great strides uh and it's great that there's a politician that recognizes the growth potential and how it could impact um on different levels so i appreciate that and um speaking of crypto like um what cryptocurrencies do you own and what's your favorite so far Oh, I own a, I own a few, um, but my favorites are, of course, Ethereum, uh, uh, of course, Ethereum, uh, but Ethereum, HBAR, uh, and Chainlink are some of my favorites. Um, they're, they're some of my favorites. I, I, I've always looked at crypto from an uh, enterprise standpoint. How can enterprise utilize it? Um because once enterprise starts utilizing it, they start building products with it internally and then build products externally for us. But the great part about Web3 is that uh, individuals like ourselves can be founders of, of multi-billion dollar tech companies within the next 10 to 20 years. So it's just uh, when I look at cryptos, uh, I'm looking at how can they be utilized in, in not just a financial sense, but how can you actually build on top of them? 
No, that's dope. That's dope. Yo, uh, Jamar, do you have uh, a favorite uh, crypto or, I'm sorry, blockchain protocol per se? Uh, protocols right now, uh, I would have to say I, I'm I'm rocking with I'm rocking with Ethereum. It's it's been my dog yeah. since day one. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, H bar, uh, H bar, I really like the way that they operate. Oh. Uh, when you look at how their technology is utilized, um, it's it's like blockchain 2.5. So yeah. I'm I'm just really excited about how that technology is going to be used. And as with anything, I mean, if we look at blockchain like a city, right? Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, some the protocols the protocols are, are basically the streets and the foundation upon which is going to be built on top of well one foundation might be good enough to, to support a train other foundations can only support cars others might be best for highways and others might be best for for runways so when i look at the protocols i'm looking at what 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 is this best use case uh is it going to be focused on having a high throughput is it going to be focused on having the cheapest throughput? Is it going to be focused on being able to have the largest data loads that uh, that are easily accessible? So things like that uh, is how I evaluate protocols. You already know the, the infrastructure of blockchain is so important. So that's dead on, man. I, dead on. Yeah, because um, like studying blockchain myself, like it is important to recognize where your strong suits are because just because blockchain is a great technology doesn't mean that everybody needs to implement it. So it's good to know where your strong suits are. So hundred percent agree with that. Um, I, so how, Oh, what was that? I said, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So, um, how do you feel about web three in general? Like you happy about like where it's going, how far it's come so far? Like, what are your thoughts? You know, I, I wish it was I wish it was more black folks in Web three. I wish it was more black folks in in crypto, uh, or should I say, uh, descendants of in, of enslaved and freed Africans, right? I wish it was more people uh, that look like myself in this <clears throat> in the space because this is such a, a gr- generational shifting and generation transforming financial opportunity for us uh, being on the 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 cutting edge of this new technology and, and, and greater implementation and interaction with the internet. So it needs to be more of us in the space. And I liken it to, to the days of when we had black planet, you know, I might yeah. be dating myself a little bit by having a black planet page, but all of us that had, you know, too short bumping on our music, bumping on our pages and falling stars on our pages, right. We're, we're doing web development. And yeah. we could have been making we could have been making bank on that if we would have just st- stuck with that skill and built actual companies and built actual infrastructure off of something that we were doing as a hobby. <laughs> man, that is, that, that is a, our culture is unmatched, man. You know, our creativity is unmatched. So, you, you know, that's just a great way to put it, you know, put it, man. You know, I, I really can't wait to more of us. And I just left a, 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 four, a two day camp and I was just talking about NFTs and it was I was the camp was. Um, surrounded by you know, age, the age of nine to thirteen, right? And it was a survival camp that I went to, and I got a chance to talk, man. And I'm, I, 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 I piggyback off what you said, man. We, I, it's important to let our youth know that this is their time, right? Uh, similar to when the internet came out, you know. Uh, so that, that's just such a spot on. Can you talk to us about, you know, how you even got into NFTs, man, and, and you know how you plan on further in that? Well, I got into to NFTs. I got into NFTs by just, you know, sticking with the technology. So understanding the 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 ERC ERC seven twenty one token, the ERC seven twenty token and the ERC eleven fifty five and eleven fifty eight, the these different um uh standards that we had for uh for tokens. You know, I kinda kept up with it, but it wasn't until like you started seeing all the art. Because you know, we knew about crypto punks and and all of that, but I yeah. was like, okay, but I didn't look at it from an artifactual standpoint, meaning that I now own a piece of history in Web three history. I now have something that uh, signifies my involvement and v- validates my involvement in of uh, in Web three. So I, I I didn't really get heavy into NFTs. I got heavy. I got a, got into NFTs um, buying 
uh, Ethereum naming service domain. So back in 2018. Got it. Yeah. That's been my major investment within NFTs. That's beautiful. And um, that, that's veering off topic. I was going to ask, like, do you dive a little bit into the development side of it or are you just, you know, client side user? Um, I've, I've done a little bit of development. In fact, we're developing a product right now uh, that deals with utilizing NFTs to, to create land trust and land deeds. So uh, one of the major issues that we have is in our community deals with estate planning. Uh, and I have a, a, a legal background. I, I practice law as a public defender and also uh, created trust for some of my clients. And so I just saw the, the merging of, of Web3 blockchain uh, with the legal world and, and generational wealth. Oh, Did you guys hear me? Um, yeah, yeah, we okay. heard you. <laughs> I thought she was going to say a little no. bit more, but I got you. Um, so um, what NFTs are your favorite? Like, which ones do you own? Uh, currently, right now, I have some friends. I have, I have some friends. I have... I have a couple of PO apps. I like my PO apps because my I, I tie my PO apps to actual locations. What other NFTs do I have? Oh, I will say this, that um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I've been looking forward to gifting him his uh, ENS name. Oh, uh, he'll need I'll be uh, gifting uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins his NFT name. So, yeah, those are the ones that I'm most proud of people that I feel have, have had major impact in, on the culture. Um, I, I have some of their ENS names and looking forward to gifting them. Uh, like I was able to gift uh, Billionaire's Row, the first black owned um, a champagne, not champagne company, but um, uh, I guess yeah, first black owned champagne company, full black owned uh, Billionaire's Row. I was able to gift them their, um, their ENS donate. So yeah. That's beautiful. Um, that so is. So you saying that you also going to do like neighborhood tales when we drop? Oh, let me know. <laughs> I can. Good savers plug. You know, we got 10,000 unique NOTs uh, dropping, man, in the metaverse here at Neighborhood Tales. And, you know, we're definitely going to have a, a variety that you can choose from. Do you plan on gaining more NOTs or, or, or anything you have your side, your eyes on right now? I'm looking it's forward to playing the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to playing the game. So the we got the, a couple different the yeah. NFTs are they're automatic. I'm looking forward to the game. I man, I got I got I got a 14 year old. I got you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. but I gotta have something for them to I gotta have I gotta make web three fun for them. Exactly. True. Hey, they can play either rogue mode or developer mode. Just know if it's rogue mode, everything goes so they can get robbed. <laughs> right, hey, so hey. They gotta good they gotta be good. Yeah, hey. <laughs> But um, so I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry. So a little, we're going to like switch things up a bit. So uh, how did you get into politics? Oh man, uh, that's a that's a great question. I got involved in politics by not wanting to be involved in politics. That's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I got involved in politics. I got involved in politics by way of the NAACP. So most people call it the NAACP, but my grandfather, who was also my mentor uh, and president of the Ventura County NAACP, uh, called it the NAACP and would, would roll over his grave if he heard me call it the NAACP. Uh, I had gotten into legal trouble myself and it was the, the NAACP uh, where it was the only people who actually went out and helped me. Uh, I know that that's not a common story, but our chapter, the Ventura County NAACP up in Cal Ventura County, California, uh, was extremely helpful in helping me with my legal troubles. And so as a result, I started volunteering. And in that space, uh, it, I would be going to somebody's job because there was a discrimination complaint or I might be dealing with the police. Uh, because they're getting ready to arrest somebody and we're keeping them from getting arrested. So being to able to interface with the mayors of, of cities, the police chiefs of cities, the district attorneys of cities, uh, it got me involved in the political landscape. But it wasn't until I went to law schools and started participating in demonstrations and protests 
uh, that I really understood how important for us to understand policy and how policy how policy can be used against us and how we can use policy for us. Well, um, as somebody who had used the law to help keep my own self out of situations, keep other people out of situations, going to law school, learning that, learning that entire process, and then having the opportunity of teaching political science at Southern University Shreveport. Well, you know, it's like, it was funny to me because it, you know, the amount of people who are, 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 you are college educated that say that they don't vote. Right. And feel the same exact way as people who may not be college educated. They feel the same exact way about their government. Well, what that shows me is that even if you are college educated, uh, if you do not know how to utilize your government to make things happen for you, you're going to feel a certain type of way about your government. Uh, prime example is, is I want to be like Amazon because Amazon is the only other person outside of, you know, what I'm saying, outside of, 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 of the United States government that does not pay federal taxes. So obviously they have a good relationship with their government. Obviously they have a, uh, they're making their government work for them. So how do I make my government work for me? And that's how I t what I taught my students. If you have a problem with your landlord, this is how this is how you use your government to help you in that situation. If you have a problem with with your streets and you need a pothole filled, this is how you use the government to get your pothole filled. This is how you you show up and act out. Because we have the right conversations with the wrong people. And what that means is that we complain at the barbershop, but we don't complain to our city councilwoman. We complain at, at the dinner table, but we won't raise hell at the at, at the, the city meetings with the, with your mayor and with your police chief. So we're having the right conversations, but we're having it with the wrong people. And when we have those conversations, not enough of the people that feel the same way are joining in with us. And so I saw that as a problem. And teaching that is, was one thing. And I told my students that, you know what, the best way to show you is the best way to teach it to you is to show you. And that's when I started running for office and I was going to walk it like I taught it. Yeah, you definitely did that, man. You know, you know, running for Senate in 2020, man, you know, can you talk to us about what that was like? Man, it was the it was the most amazing, frustrating, incredible, discouraging experience of a lifetime and i wouldn't trade it for anything um there is a there is there is a something that you learn about running for office that they can never teach you in a book and the only people who can teach you are people who've ran for office and what it, that is is that there are two things that you need money and votes and long before i ever needed your vote i needed money and so we expect for our politicians to do things, but we don't put, we don't, we, we go, we tell the politicians to go to the store, but we send them out there without no money. And then when he comes back with, with, comes back with something, you're like, oh, I'm so glad that you brought me back something. Or you're pissed off because he didn't bring you what you wanted, but you never asked like, how in the hell did you get the money to bring me back something when I didn't bring you, when I didn't give you nothing in the first place? Exactly. No, that so they, was my point. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, please, please. But, but that reminds me, like, you know, on Friday when um, Smokey Mama wanted some cigarettes, she was like, this is not enough. She was like, make it enough. <laughs> make it enough. Absolutely. And what did Smokey do? do? He focused on the things that he, that were most important to him and gave, gave, gave his mother just the bare minimum of what she wanted. Right. And that's what happens to us is we do not take care of our politicians or we send the, the real people who are going to go out there and fight for us. We do not even we, we don't do the de decency of re researching these people, let alone uh, donating to their campaigns or volunteering for their or volunteering their campaigns. And then we wonder why we get screwed in the process. This is what Malcolm X was talking about in the ballot of the bullet. If we do not utilize our political power, right, then we're going to have to be forced to utilize a bullet to get our to 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 get our wishes. So, I as many as as many gangsters as I see in in our community, uh, never have I seen them really take up arms for for a cause that was worthy. That's true. So. We're going to be expecting people every every day, other pe everyday people to utilize bullets in, instead of a ballot. And we're too afraid. And, and not all of us, but a lot of us, are, not not all of us, but many of us are afraid to go there. But we don't have to go there if we organize ourselves economically, if we organize ourselves politically and we organize ourselves culturally, culture. 
one of the one of the challenges that we have in our community is our culture because our culture determines what we do with our politics and what we do with our economics and so if we address what's going on in our culture we can make we can really change things for the better and what i mean by that is if we have a culture of of promoting entrepreneurship then we don't have to worry about having so many consumers. If we promote a culture, a, a culture of education, and I'm not just talking about formal education, I'm talking about the education that's going to be able to put food on the table, that's going to be able to put clothes on your back. If we, we address that, those cultural challenges in our community, then we can utilize our politics and utilize our economics in a way that empowers our community, in a way that allows us to have better schools for our children better, be, and better standards of living for our families. I agree with all of that. And um, one thing is that, I mean, you brought up great points about supporting a politician that do run, but I'm not going to lie. Like growing up, I would have never thought of that. Like I still didn't think of that today. Like maybe I should support them. Cause the only time that I thought about supporting a politician was um, uh, being a female Marine. Like we have this group of, of all of us that come together and it was one that was promoting herself. And she was like, Hey, it'll be great if you can donate to my campaign. But I was like, okay. But like, I would say um, like the city where I come from Jackson, Mississippi, we, we didn't even think twice about that. So how do you think like politicians could like gear towards the youth and the people who's actually growing to make the changes, you know, like, Maybe should we get them while they're young to like see the importance of voting and things that politicians can do? Because I've never like received the type of like message that you've given me right now. You know, it. it I'm, I'm glad that you said that because it absolutely does start with our children. It absolutely does start with our children. And it starts with our children in something as simple as um, what do you want to eat today? And you say, well, I'm going to give you a vote. Well, what's a vote, mommy? What's a vote, daddy? Oh, a vote is, is, is how you exercise your, your, your voice in a government. And right now, your rules, you live underneath my government. And I'm going to give you the chance to be able to have a vote in what you're going to eat tonight. It starts with, it starts with our, having our children involved uh, at an early age, but how can we, how, most of our parents weren't, most of us weren't taught civics in school, weren't really taught how politics works in school. So how can we even give it to our children when we don't understand it? What we do give our, but, but what we do give our children is, oh, our vote doesn't count and these people are going to do whatever they want to do. Well, in a sense, yes, they are going to do whatever they want to do. They're just like children. If you just send them on out, they're going to do whatever the heck that they want to do. And, and and embarrass you and 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 hopefully they make you proud but more often than not they're gonna be kids and kids don't have no experience and they and, and don't know so our politicians are like our kids and if we focus if we focused on making sure that our children understood how this system actually works knowing that yes um it, it may not seem like I have much power on the national level with the president but I do have a lot of power with my mayor I do have a lot of power with my city council person. I do have a lot of power with my city commissioner. I do. Ha these are people that I can I can see and touch and oftentimes might run into them at the grocery store, but definitely can see and touch and, and, and know where their meetings are at. So it starts with us as parents getting involved in understanding politics in the sense in the areas that are important to us. So what am I saying? All right. Let's say you 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 like playing basketball, but there's no the, the the courts at your at your at your park haven't been taken care of, and so now you're trying to figure out how can I get these basketball courts fixed. It's about going to the city council person and complaining, and really just starting asking questions. Because if you ask the questions, likely there's going to be people who appear to help to answer your question or a quick Google search, but starting off with our children and thinking about our children and, and teaching our children. Uh, and it's one of the things that we're, that I was doing in Shreveport, Louisiana with teaching children and teaching college students about their government. Yes. Don't ever give a politician a mic, you know, he'll take five minutes when you only give him three. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's good. It's a good message. 
But um, so you were running for Senate. So um, what's your goal if elected? My goal, if my goal, if elected, is to be the communicator of uh, uh, for the people. What does that mean? I don't. I much rather have my constituency thinking for me or telling me what they want me to do than leaving all of the decisions up to me, and then hoping that you're pleased with it. But what does that require? That requires for people to be involved in their government. Um, I want to make sure. I, I want to make sure that. Our children that that our children are given better schools. I want them to know. I want them to be taught blockchain and develop and coding in school. I want them to have skills that they're able to that that they're able to go out and use, regardless of their age, to go build products and sell them. I want I want them taught entrepreneurship. I want more entrepreneurship programs within the schools, within and, and entrepreneurship community programs. So even if you don't necessarily like the school that your children are going to, you're not necessarily dependent upon the school, but your community is it has the resources to put these programs in place. I want to make sure that people I want to make sure that people have uh have good housing. I you know if if I have the political if I have the political support uh from from my constituents, I'm pushing for reparations. But I need I need I need I need people who feel the same way, who are able to find common ground with me to donate to my campaign, to tell people about me, to let others know that I that that I'm here. Because I ran as a grassroots candidate and we know about grassroots candidates. One of their biggest challenges is funding. Yeah. Man, that's that's deep, Dr. Jamar. Man, you, you hitting a lot of a lot of nails on the head, man. And you know, we're excited about you know your continued success. And and one of those things, in our opinion, is well, one of the questions regarding your success is: Do you ever plan on running for president? And if so, when can we see that here? You know, I I have definitely contemplated it. I have definitely contemplated it, and it's still an option available on the table. Um, when would that when when would that happen? Um, later on in life, late, yeah. late, later on in life, but in, in not in the the later future, but in the more near future. Um, one of uh, once again, the, the the you have a lot of power on the local level. You have a lot of power on the local level, and if we uh, people that are in Web three and blockchain, if we really target it, uh, particularly southern cities, and set up camps there. Uh, and, and set up, you know, enclaves there. We could really, really, really revolutionize some areas in the South. Yeah, because the South needs some help. The the, the South <laughs> needs a, a prayer. The South needs a miracle. The South needs Web three, and the South yeah. needs Black folks that are in Web three that are that that are willing to make the invest make the investment. See, in in places like New York or in California, they're already 15, 10, 15 years ahead of the South. Well, what does that mean? That means that uh, in the South, we can actually become real leaders, real leaders and powerhouses in the South and become global, regional and global powerhouses. The, the United States may not recognize us, but others around the world will recognize us because the, the, the proof is going to be in the pudding. I agree. But um, so um, are there any out any things outside of voting? that supporters can do to help you in your conquest. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh they can they can donate. They they can donate it to the conquest. They can help me build web three products for my campaign. Okay. If there's if if there if you're an artist, you can help me create uh create uh uh uh, uh voter registration and 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 uh, and uh voter activation. Uh if you uh, murals and artwork, if you're in dance uh, if you're a rap artist, you could you could hop on a track with me. I'll jump on any track that you I'll jump on any track that you want as long as it's uplifting and empowering to our people. So I want to work with people in in all different areas and all different industries and in all different walks of life because that's what makes us America. That's what makes us great, and that's what makes us as as, as black people so relevant because everybody comes from us. Yo, Doctor Jamar, I'm gonna hold you to to hear you on that track, man. I'm gonna hold you to that, man. And that's it. <laughs> Let me know. Yeah, yeah. Not with me, with Cheers, though. With Cheers. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm cheers down. and Trizzy. <laughs> cheers down. and Trizzy. Exactly. Cheers and Trizzy. For sure. But, you know, 
another question for me, man, is, is, is in your opinion, where are we with blockchain technology adopt, adapt, adoption in the USA? Are we behind? Are we ahead? Can you talk to us about that? Well, compared to like, compared to like Nigeria, compared to, to India, compared to the, the, the UAE, uh, United States is a little behind. Okay. Um, but in terms of the grand scheme of things, like we're 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 ahead, and particularly black folks that are in Web three, we're ahead and and very far ahead. However, um, being ahead is is one thing. Let's be ahead and let's still grow at the same time. Agreed, because um, th- we got to do uh, upward mobility, is what I'm looking into because there there are quite a few black people in uh web three and i'm so glad that neighborhood tales has come has come into fruition um because it's just showing that it's just showing that um we are recognizing that we're always behind so it's good that we're catching on to um this type of technology and like we're putting our foot in it and actually looking to grow roots with this pro with this project in particular um I'm not really too fond of like, well, not fond. I'm not too really well versed into other projects, but um, we've had quite a few um, people of color come onto the show and it just warms my spirit to know that we are like diving into getting ahead as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm saying that uh, there's, 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 there's strength in numbers. Uh, there's a reason why India is, is such a major powerhouse, and it's because their entire country focused on making sure that their their populace was going to export techno, uh, coding and development services to the entire world. Yeah. For, for us is making sure that we we as a we as a people see this as an industry that we need to dominate in. Yes, I 100% agree on that. Um, so in the picture in your flyer, ugh, so you're holding an assault, you're holding an assault rifle. Yep. I, I don't even like that uh, term, but because I like guns too. So uh, how do you think like Americans will perceive it, uh, you know, with the gun violence narrative going around? And do you even care? Well, you know, the, the thing about the gun violence narrative is I, I I was a juvenile public defender. I hate the word juvenile, but um, I was dealing with kids who had gun cases. And when I had that picture up, that was the first time that they had ever seen somebody that looked like them, that was educated, and that was a professional that looked like that. So already right then and there, instead of them looking at me different, they're seeing like, you understand where I'm coming from. Uh, when we look at gun violence and when we look at gun violence in America, right, when we look at gun violence in America, it's interesting how gun violence is treated and uh, when it, how gun violence and enforcement is dealt with in the black community versus how it's dealt with in other communities. We always we always want to punish the individual when it comes down to gun violence in the black community. But all of a sudden we start talking about a mental health problem when it happens in other in, in other communities. Um and that one that's unfair that that's unfair and it's disingenuous but it also invites instability because now you have a a a judicial system that has no integrity and when you ain't got no integrity when the first major shocks that you have then those walls start crumbling down and that's what we're seeing right now uh with this outbreak of of uh, of gun violence is there a lot of it is dealing with with mental health issues, but isn't that a mental health issue to do violence within your own community? I mean, yeah. And people isn't that a, aren't, that. aren't you under mental distress when you when when you're trying to figure out where your next meal is going to come from? Aren't you under uh, immense uh, mental mental and emotional trauma uh, when you you live in a, a, a neighborhood uh, where uh, where, where folks are always hitting you up and you just trying to go to school. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it, it, is it contra, it, it, is it controversial? Absolutely. Does it get people talking? Absolutely. Um, and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm here for every argument because once again, we have to look at it from the perspective of 
what were what, what were guns created to do? Let's have a genuine conversation about that. They were designed to kill people. Um, what 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 can guns be utilized for? They can be utilized for a number of things, but uh, long before there's there's I've never in the history of firearms have I ever seen a gun just go off without anything being done to it. So it speaks to the heart and minds and the intent of the people who are using it. And that's what we have to address is what's going on in their hearts and in, and, and in their minds and get to the bottom of that. It was powerful. So I, I love it. Um, yeah. You had something to say, JD? I, I, I just piggyback off of what you're saying. It was just powerful, man. You know, that you know, everything you talk about, you know, just it, it really corresponds with Web3 and, and what we're looking to push with our youth and super, super dope, man. Yeah. And um, I'm always an advocate. Well, I love guns. So I'd say it's all about teaching because being in a, in a Marine Corps, like they teach you safety, safety, safety first. And we have like weapon safety rules, like never point your weapon at anything you don't intend on shooting. The four so laws I, of gun safety. Yeah. Like you got to know what to do. And, and these people, like they have their children just like carelessly around guns or able to access the guns because, you know, they, they teach shooting, like people teach shooting at young ages, but they don't teach like, okay, bro, like, you know, you can really hurt somebody or yourself mm -hmm. with these, with this weapon. Like it's not an assault rifle. I, I hate that term. It's just a freaking gun or whatever it is. Um, so I just think safety should be number one, yeah. um, no matter what. Um, Cause I have multiple guns and I tell my little three-year-old, like don't ever go in my purse. If you do, see it don't ever touch it in your life like keep it up keep it away but you know a little child can grasp the concept so i'm i'm just yeah. confused as to why <laughs> these adults can't either well you know and also we it comes being empowered be, being empowered even more information when you find out that two-thirds of all gun violence is suicide yeah right so we're speaking to a real mental health problem that's here in this country um, it's just the, the gun violence and the mass shootings happen to, to catch the attention. And what you're going to see is um, heavy enforcement because now um, mass shootings, mass shootings where it is intended that multiple people are to be hurt are also being classified as mass shootings as uh, where multiple people were hurt, even though it was only targeted w by one individual. So what do I mean? Uh, they're going to classify if there's a shootout in the club, they're going to classify that as a mass shooting. I mean, I can see where that could come from. So that's that's going to be that. So when we look at the FBI statistics, you're going to once again now see uh, a way in which the numbers are manipulated to make it look like black men um, are are the greatest perpetrators of those kinds of crime. So I just want people to be on the lookout for that. Well, thank you. I, I would never thought about that because, you know, they um, numbers are easily inflated by changing a rule or changing verbiage. That's what I've learned in America. Yes. Yes. They make up words like every every quarter to roll out and people adopt it and use it as word like a bond. Like, no, you can't do that because it's now written in the U.S., you know, whatever. But anywho. <laughs> so let's move on to something else. Uh, so we have this thing at um, on neighborhood talks called Capper Facts. It's basically a series of questions where um, we'll at yeah a series of questions and you'll just respond Capper Facts and then you'll give your reasoning as to why. And right. so the first one is uh, NFTs are the future of digital assets. Capper Fact. Fact. Why do you say Fact. that? Uh, because it's like being able to put it in a container, being able to put anything in a container. NFT is just a container. Um, how how you access that container is going to be where a lot of the value is, is is created. How you interact with that container, or how you interact with the contents of that container. So NFTs are going to are are are, are going to be the future of assets because I can program that NFT to do whatever the heck I wanted to do, and then put it on a blockchain that uh, that 
can be governed by certain rules. So there's going to be a lot of very interesting things that are going to be created as a result of NFTs. So fact. All right. All right. Keep it going. Uh, the metaverse will become a thriving economy. Cap effect. Oh, I'm going to say fact. I'm going to I'm going to say fact, but a fact with a caveat. Um, the metaverse is going to allow us to, to, to interact more deeply and it's going to be allow us to, to interact in a different way um, than we have. Uh, the, the challenge is, is being able to uh, where the, the best value is, is being being able to actually do valuable interactions within the metaverse. So once we get it outside of 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 the the think of digital safe rooms if i can create those yeah um so i'm going to say fact i'm, I'm going to say fact with a caveat right. gotcha. so um cap or fact uh your vote doesn't count cap 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 <laughs> cap 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 yeah. cap <laughs> That's cap. Your vote, yeah, 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 yeah. Your vote doesn't. Your, your vote does count. Your, your vote does count. Um, it, it it counts if you make it count. It counts if you if if you raise hell with your politician. I tell people like this: if you treated your vote like you treated a hundred dollars, and you were behind on bills, and somebody owed you that hundred dollars, if you treated your vote like that, your vote would count. The one thing that, that your vote changes is how you get taxed. There's always tax bills coming up on every time you vote. And people all the time say that they don't play about their money. But every time that, that they have a chance to speak up in government about how the government's going to use their money, they are silent. Yeah. So that's that's cap, cavity cap cap. Do you think do you think <laughs> that like people are unaware because of like the verbiage surrounding it and how I don't want to say ignorant, but like how unaware people are of how politics move. You know, it, you're kept unaware on purpose. You're kept unaware on purpose, so that you, if the only rights you have are the ones that you that you exercise. You can only exercise the rights that you know about. So if you don't exercise that, if you don't exercise that right, we talk about. Oh well, you know our ancestors died for the right to vote. Um, no, they didn't. They died. They they they, they died because they were trying to get their voice heard and thought that the vote was the only way that they could do it. Uh, for us, we are kept ignorant and uh, and unaware of the power of our vote because uh, we want we're taught to be helpless individuals in this society. So when people say that their vote doesn't count is because they cannot tie their vote to a problem in their life. They can't tie. We can talk about the crack era and the crack epidemic and what that did to our community, but we can tie that back to Reagan. Well, let's talk about things that happened in your, it happened in your community. You got to somebody, you got the police beating up on people in your community. Well, guess what? You can tie that back to who you voted for mayor or who you voted for, for police chief. If you voted for people that had that 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 had your interests, that means the things that you're willing to go go and fight about, the things that you 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 don't care what the law say about, those are your interests. You don't play about your money, prove it. Go 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 raise hell, go raise hell at the city council meeting. You don't play about your children, cool. Go raise hell at the 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 the, at the school board meeting. But being able to tie situations and your environment your pocketbook back to the people that you voted for i love it i love it i love it man. dope content so keeping the controversy going here on neighborhood talk with capper fact joe biden joe biden stole the election from trump capper fact that's cap that's 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 that's, that's cap all right you got to tell us what that's cap um uh to say that Joe Biden uh took the stole the election from 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 Trump is to disrespect all of the very smart people that uh Trump had uh on his on, on his campaign in terms of targeting and understanding who his uh, understanding who his voters were and his base was. I mean this is the first time in history that we've ever heard about Cambridge Analytica and how they utilize Facebook in order to target the people so that they can have votes. That's one. Uh, two, um, 
you know, uh, uh, the fact that the fact that people made a choice between Mr. Mass Incarcerator Joe Biden um, or Mr. Mass Deporter uh, Donald J. Trump is just is, is just so interesting to me. I voted for Kanye and I got more votes than Kanye in my own state. So, um, Cap. I, I think that the American people, the American people got scared into into not utilizing their brains to look at other candidates that were available. And we get caught up in this voting for the lesser of two evils. So you mean to tell me that you vote for 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 evil before you vote for a black man that you think got problems? Interesting. Yeah. Now, that's dope perspective. Appreciate that. Yeah, I love that perspective. Never heard it before. But hey, that's what we do here. So. Last cap of fact question. So Barack Obama cared about people of color. Uh, that's fact. Uh, because you know, I don't, I don't identify somebody as, as a person of color. I identify somebody black. Um, the 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 thing is, is that what are the what were the things that were done specifically specifically for me? Did he do things for people of color? Absolutely. Um, he implemented uh, 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 implemented what was it? Uh, the Dream Act. Uh, that was done for for people of color, but I I'm not able to to take advantage of that. Um, you know, there were there were other things that he did, so I don't identify as a person of of color because then that d- dilutes my blackness uh, and the struggles that I have and the the unique relationship that people of my uh, of of my heritage and and descent ha- uh, have with the United States government, the history and, and relationship. So. Uh, he did plenty of things for for a person for 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 people of color. Uh, he he put people of color in 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 uh, positions of 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 high power. So he did plenty of things for for people of color. Yeah, see, another great perspective. <laughs> I love it. So um, so it was great having you here on Neighborhood Talk. So uh, are there any final words for our listeners? Look. Please come follow me. Uh, follow me on on Instagram, uh, Doctor D R J A M A R Montgomery, uh, M O N T G O M E R Y. Um, follow me on Twitter, Doc Monty F O R U S. So Doc Monty for us. Uh, follow me and talk to me. I talk back. You got questions? Holla at me. Uh, I, I love hearing from. I love hearing from folks. I love jo- jumping on on IG Live, and so let's let's let's. I want to hear perspectives, and I want to challenge your perspective, and and see if you can get me to think about things from a different perspective, and see if I can get you to think about things from a different perspective. And thank you once again for having me on the show. All right, it's amazing. Back to you, JD. You there, bro? She like you there, well, of course I'm there, but you know you gotta turn <laughs> off mute to actually let the listeners hear you. And I, but as I was saying on mute, Dr. Jamar Montgomery, there you have it here on Able to Talks. We want to thank you for joining our space, talking everything crypto legislation, and you know what an honor and privilege it was to have you. But y'all know how we get down here in Neighborhood Talk. We're right back at it tomorrow, August 31st. Neighborhood Talk. We're having Nicholas Lyons, one of the advisors of of uh, Verus. Known for creating $92 billion in capital gains, public and private. You don't want to miss all the knowledge that he's going to be dropping right here tomorrow on Neighborhood Talk, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You don't want to miss that. And you all already know how we get down here in Neighborhood Talk. Our claim is to be the newest and latest. That means we give the newest and latest giveaways. All you need to do is be a part of our Discord. It's easy as hopping over right now to our Twitter page, NHTales. Click the link in our bio. It'll lead you right to our Discord to get all the exclusive updates regarding our giveaways, $100,000 in cash prizes. You don't want to miss the exclusive drops there. That's it for me, y'all. Y'all can find me everywhere at J.D. Jones. Hey, Mocha, I'm throwing it back to you. It's been an absolute pleasure hosting this space with you again. Likewise, man. So um, I just want to thank the listeners once again for joining us um, um, on Episode 8 of Neighborhood Talk. And, of course, you can find us at NHTales on Twitter. And Neighborhood Tales on every other platform. Y'all, we on everything. IG, TikTok, Discord, LinkedIn, Facebook, Clubhouse. And you can catch the recordings of the Neighborhood Talks on our YouTube channel. And you can also find me, your girl Mocha on the Block, on IG and Twitter. And it's been a pleasure. And until next time, y'all. Peace. It's a neighborly day. 
in this beauty wood. Would you be my? Would you be my? It's a neighborly day.